Hello and welcome to a new LP. Today we're going to be playing Dracula Origin, which is a retelling of the classic Dracula story by Bram Stoker. It's actually a really good game. So let's choose new, start a new game, and watch the cutscene. Other than sunlight, which can be fatal to them, there are very few ways in which to conquer a vampire. However, various legends and reference books about these creatures of the night, as well as my own experiments, have affirmed the following. Firstly, vampires detest the smell of garlic. This preventative measure, used in a good number of regions subject to the depredation of these creatures, is omnipresent in the folklore of these aforementioned regions. Secondly, vampires cannot endure the fact that they cannot see their reflection in a mirror. This optical effect, which I feel confident I can witness, strikes them like a club with the vacuity and aberrance of their existence. Thirdly, some storytellers mention an irrational fear of running water, as well as a specific vulnerability to silver bullets. I have not been able to test and validate these theses. In fact, during the half a lifetime that I have dedicated to the research and annihilation of these creatures, I have only had as true recourse three weapons which have proven decisive. The crucifix foremost, brandished with conviction, it fights off these creatures and prevents for a moment all attacks from them. Next, holy water. It serves to inflict wounds on the creature because it burns its flesh like acid. Lastly, a wooden stake is the final instrument of destruction. After having discovered the sanctuary of the enemy, one must profit from its damned slumber in order to strike with the greatest force into the beating heart of Professor, it's me. It's Maria, your lodger. Professor, there's a letter here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Slide it under the door. Can I get you anything, Professor? Something to eat, perhaps? Mm. What? No. No, thank you, Maria. But, Professor, it's been four days now that you haven't been outside, is it? Maria, I am trying to work. Leave me in peace. My friend, how can I allow you to leave, and what will become of you? I should have been in your place in this cursed castle, and been destroyed by the one whom I have chased for years. You, you've had Mina, poor thing. What grief I will cause when I shall tell her the news. There isn't a moment to lose. We must inform Mina. She is in grave danger. And here is the letter that we just got from Jonathan Harker. Dear Professor, it's a strange manner in which to commence a letter, but I hope that you shall never have to read these words. For if that is the case, it is because, because a grievous destiny, worse even than death perhaps, has put an end to my existence. Know that at the time in which I write these lines, I find myself at the very heart of evil, in one of the rooms of Count Dracula's castle. This missive will take many weeks to reach you, more time than my return trip to London, which I will make if I am able to carry through my terrible task. This letter would have thus, would thus have no relevance. Hence, if you are reading this, pray for my soul. Finding the beast's lair was no simple task. The Count's subordinates are everywhere east of Vienna, and they maintain a veil of secrecy and terror regarding the very existence of our enemy. With force, persuasion, threats, and silver pieces, I managed to find the approximate location of the Count's grounds. During my trip to this accursed place, Chance placed a young scholar whose team had been attacked by bandits in my path. Grave wounds had forced him to take rest at an inn before he could resume his journey, to Count Dracula's dwelling, where he was supposed to take inventory of the library. I appropriated the young man's letter of introduction, and extracted from him the necessary pieces of information 
to get to the castle. I arrived on the night of the second day at an immense fortress seeping with death and corruption where the origin of the evil that we're fighting is found. My first meeting with the Count left me in a memory that will haunt me to the end of my days. How to imagine such nobility, charm, and benevolence in the behaviors of a man who, only by his icy, demented look, betrays his true nature. I was just as subjugated by his elegance as his intelligence. Upon my nocturnal arrival, we discussed at length my alleged library experience. He immediately noted my accent and asked questions that were both precise and direct. I was the mouse attempting to answer to the cat, and, despite myself, I gave away my identity as well as my London heritage. He seemed to read into each of my answers, and it was the devil of a task to mutter an explanation of my presence here as a delegate from a large v Viennese library. He then interrogated me regarding London and England, and seemed genuinely impassioned to hear about life in our capital. I then had the misfortune of mentioning Mina, my dear betrothed, while recalling an afternoon spent boating. The Count pressed me, in an almost impertinent manner, to show me a photograph of her. I complied, and was then struck with an infinite terror by the Count's rapacious and carnivorous gaze as he examined the face of my loved one grasped between his hands. I feigned a very believable fatigue and isolated myself in my quarters. Sleep did not find me that night or any of the following nights. Terrifying, abnormal noises mixed with the howling of the wolves that s swarmed the region. The Count has been absent for three days, but his abominable servant assures me that he, he is to return tonight. I will wait no longer to spring into action. This immense place oppresses me, and it seems that the shadows themselves are alive, observing me and tormenting me with their laughter. I miss Mina so much. What I wouldn't give to be by her side. I don't dare write her. She wouldn't understand the dangers that my mission involves. Assure Mina once again of my complete devotion to her, and, if you receive this letter, ensure that she knows my last thoughts were of her. Your student and friend, Jonathan Harker. And then we get a news clipping from News Times. Domestic drama. A sad and bloody business took place yesterday on the first floor of a small residential building located next to the New Kent Road station. From interviews with the neighbors, young Garrett Melford first killed his young wife Magdalene in a fit of jealousy before dying himself. The young married couple had moved in only two months ago, and Mr. Melford was employed as foreman at Grimble and Bromsby Cement Works. Various testimony confirms that early in the evening, in the absence of her husband, Mrs. Melford admitted an elegant man dressed in black into their flat. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Melford returned to the domicile after a long day of work. As soon as he entered the flat, an eerie and colossal black bird flew out of one of the windows in the direction of National Gallery. A cry could be heard, as well as the sounds of a struggle, and finally, a gunshot. After an alarming silence, some of the neighbors en entered into the flat, only to find Mrs. Melford stretched out lifelessly on the bed, with a bleeding wound to the neck. Mr. Melford was sitting on his chair, or a chair, his skull agape, and a still smoking pistol at his feet. A small crowd gathered around the place, which most certainly allowed the third player in this drama the opportunity to abscond. Upon the arrival of the police, they concluded that it was a murder of passion followed by a suicide, even though the exact unfolding of the events, as well as the identity of the lady's nocturnal visitor, are still unknown. Note, the testimonials taken at the crime scene are very troubling, particularly in regard to this eerie and colossal black bird. See last Tuesday's edition for our report on an equally unnerving event. Come in, Professor. I am pleased to see you. Please excuse the disorder in my attire, but I haven't had the strength to attend to the housekeeping this morning. And this is Mina, Jonathan Harker's betrothed. Uh, I guess we're going to check on her to see that everything is all right. But what is going on, Mina? And where is your servant? Jenny is absent. She... She is with her sister. My God, I am at a loss for words. We found her poor sister yesterday dead. An atrocious crime. Today's newspapers gives the heinous details. The police came here to break the news to Jenny. She was shocked and had to go to the police station to identify her sister. What a tragedy. 
She was my junior by three years and now she's dead. But what a paltry hostess I am. To what pleasure do I owe your visit? Have you received news of Jonathan? Ah, not at the moment. I came to see if all was well. Jonathan repeatedly insisted I take care of you. I reckoned. Could I take you for a stroll in the park, perhaps? Nothing would give me greater pleasure. I must alter my thoughts. Give me a few moments in order to ready myself. I did not have the courage to break the sad news to her. But it must be done sooner or later. What could have happened to this poor young girl? Mina told me that it was mentioned in the papers. And thus begins our investigation. We have to find out what happened to her sister, I guess. And this game is very forgiving. Um, let's try to leave. It seems that I have not inspected everything. We can't leave until we've inspected everything we need to inspect. Which, you know, it's a... I have no interest in going that way. And that as well. So, if you screw up, the game will correct you, basically. Which is nice. It keeps the story moving along. Beautiful roses. And so now let's check out the paper. From the Courier. The bloodless corpse of a chambermaid found near the banks of the Thames. Two youths residing near the Cursed Mermaid pub, located near the warehouses at South Wark Bridge, made a macabre discovery yesterday while they were playing in a lane. The pale, bloodless corpse of a young Carlotta Perry, 23, was lying behind a stack of wooden crates. The woman was fully clothed, and, based on the first official report, her death is due to precise incisions to the neck, which caused her blood to drain. A curious point is the almost complete absence of blood on the ground near the corpse. On the other hand, a few local trollops seem to be led directly towards a wall located on the banks of the Thames, and the proprietor, who has been assisting the police in their investigations, confirms having seen them continue to the roof in the same continue to the roof in the same direction, that is, towards the Tate Art Gallery. The precise circumstances, and more important, the motivations of such a barbaric act are still unknown. The victim, an exemplary servant, had an excellent reputation and led a life without incident. Vampires possess numerous powers, such as uncommon physical capabilities and the ability to transform into bats. So, what he's saying is that a vampire killed these people. I'm tempted to agree with him. It is a photograph of Harker. Mina is very much in love with him. And that's Jonathan Harker. The man who, I guess, is dead? Um, we actually don't know. Oh, and you can look through your dialogue again if you've forgotten anything. Um, because he sent a letter, said that if it reached us, he's probably dead, but we don't know for sure. And here's our item screen. We're carrying matches and a crucifix. Nothing really that we can use at the moment. Let's see what else there is in this uh, Daily Big Mirror. That's an interesting name for the paper. A bloody settling of scores between prostitutes. Yesterday evening, shortly after 10pm, the lifeless corpse of the lovely Sarah McAllister, 19, was found lying under a porte cochere at the intersection of Tottenham Court and Euston Road. She is undoubtedly the latest victim of the frequent brawls between prostitutes who back down at nothing to defend a more lucrative workplace or to displace an arrival whose physique is more in demand. According to a number of her workmates, who preferred to remain anonymous, the beautiful Sarah didn't have time to get down to business on her first night before her career was finished for good. The local constabulatory constabulatory, ordinarily of a slothfulness without equal, but for their inefficiency in solving this type of case, nonetheless have built a strong case which will permit them, as is the case once per century, to rapidly arrest the person responsible for this crime. In fact, the death of the young apprentice is due to two small thrusts of a very small pointed weapon to the neck. 
A police squadron passed a good part of the night shaking down all the ladies of the night who have styled their hair in a bun with the aid of a knitting needle. One of them, Maria Cole, 39, also known under the aliases Janet the Parrot, Mother Goose, Mammy Bloomers, and Debbie of Epsom, is under particular scrutiny by the investigators. Her booth faced that of the beautiful Sarah, and all they could get from her were drunken mutterings regarding a stranger, who after quickly finishing with the girl, jumped in a single bound onto the roof of the neighboring house before fleeing in a straight line towards St. George's Cathedral. I'd wager that this parrot should find another tune to sing if she wants to convince the authorities of her innocence. Damnation! This cannot be a coincidence. Harker's letter spoke of his host's interest in London. I must get to the bottom of this. So there are at least three cases within the, the last week that seem really suspicious. Let's see if we can find this another. This pile of newspapers must have belonged to Harker. He kept them to help him in his hunt. Perhaps I will find the article to which the News Times made reference today. So the News Times mentioned um, something suspicious in last Tuesday's edition. So if this one was Thursday, 8.09. So Tuesday would be going back to... Uh, five? No, it is not that. Try again. Useless. No, I'm retarded. These articles surely contain some <laughs> Six. Permit me to discover My math is completely terrible. No big deal. Taken refuge. A faithful parishioner escapes the claws of a demon. A faithful parishioner escapes the claws of a demon. Last night, a prudent and devout young lady, Miss Ethel Basingstroke, narrowly escaped the assaults of a lunatic, or rather, a demon from hell, in her own words. Miss Basingstoke, Basingstroke, 21, who is to be married next month, was exiting St. George's Church, where she mends clothing for the poor, when she was assailed by a satyr dressed in black, with flaming red eyes and possessing the strength of ten men. Miss Basingstroke explained that the man forced her to cleave herself to him, crushing her to the point of suffocation. His titanic strength rendering all resistance futile. <clears throat> her last act before such a dishonorable death, she said, was to bring her hand up to her cross hanging from her necklace and to say a prayer. The man became furious and screamed words in, in an infernal language, and his intended victim sank to the ground. Before fainting, Miss Basingstroke swears to have seen her assailant change into a winged demon who escaped with an uproar in the direction of Victoria Station. So with all that information contained in the four news articles, we should be able to find where Dracula is. Parker's map of London, quite detailed. Using this These articles map of surely London. contain some clues which will permit me to discover where the perpetrator of these wrongdoings has taken refuge. So if we go back into our news articles and See, she was exiting, exiting St. George's Church, and her intruder took off in the direction of Victoria Station. So take our pencil. That's St. George's Cathedral. And I think there's a separate one for the church. Yeah, St. George's Church over here. Here is the place where this young religious woman was attacked by this demon. Oops. I have to Here is hold the place it. There we go. This young religious woman was attacked by this demon. And then we bring it to Victoria Street Station. And that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. And I believe there was one person attacked near Southwark Bridge. That's where the corpse of Jenny's young sister was discovered. And he took off in the direction of the art gallery. And that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. And there was someone got attacked over here ah, at Houston Road. Here is the spot where McAllister was found lying under a porte cochere. And the aggressor took off towards St. George's Cathedral. And that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. And where was the last one? I think, oh, New Kent Road. 
and here is the Melford's building. They took off towards the National Gallery, I think. And that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. And there, now we have all these points centering on Godalming Manor. All of these paths cross at a point, Godalming Manor, next to Bloomsbury Cemetery. I must get there as soon as possible while it is still day. The park and Mina will wait. It seems that all of the ways that the assassin took to escape after each attack cross at one point. Godalming Manor, next to the Bloomsbury Cemetery. Without a doubt, the demon must have a lair. I must find it and destroy it if I can. The hour of confrontation approaches. My dear child, I had forgotten some urgent business that calls me elsewhere in London. We aren't going to the park. It is only postponed for the time being, but I would like you to do something for me. Could you please find me a dozen bulbs of garlic from one of the markets? Bring them here and hang them near the windows. Near the windows? Ah, yes. I do not have the time to explain it to you, but you must do this for me. And if a stranger comes to see you and claims to be here on my behalf, or that of Jonathan, do not, under any circumstance, let them in. You are alarming me, Professor. Should I be worried? No, it is nothing. At least, I think not. All will be well. I shall return this evening, and we shall dine together. If I am still alive. That may not have been the best thing to leave her with. I'm just saying. Scare the poor girl half to death and then tell her you might not be back because you're dead. Anyway, this is Godalming Manor. We will investigate it in the next episode, and we'll see if we can find Dracula's lair. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.